very good afternoon, church, and welcome to Midweek Sharing. Today, I'm going to tell you a story. And it goes like this. A man was exploring caves by the seashore. In one of the caves, he found a canvas bag which was with a bunch of hardened clay balls. It was like someone had rolled clay balls and left them out in the sun to bake. They didn't look like much, but they intrigued the man. So he took the bag out of the cave with him. As he strolled along the beach, he would throw the clay balls one at a time into the ocean as far as he could. He thought about it until he dropped one of the clay balls and it cracked open on a rock. Inside was a beautiful precious stone. Excited, the man started breaking up the remaining clay balls. Each contained a similar treasure. He found thousands of dollars worth of jewels in the 20 or so clay balls he had left. Then he struck him. He had been on the beach for a long time. He had thrown maybe 50, 60 of the clay balls with their hidden treasure into the ocean waves. Instead of thousands of dollars in treasure, he could have taken home tens of thousands, but he had just thrown them away. If you think about it, it's like, it's like that with people. We look at someone, maybe even ourselves, and we see the external clay vessel. It doesn't look like much from the outside. It isn't always beautiful or sparkling. So we discount it. We see the person as less important than someone else because they are less beautiful or less stylish or less handsome or less well-known or less wealthy. But we have not taken the time to find the treasure hidden inside that person. There is a treasure in each and every one of us, church. If we take time to get to know that person and if we ask God to show us that person the way he sees them then the clay begins to peel off and the brilliant gem begins to shine forth just may we not come to the end of our lives and find that we have thrown away a fortune in friendships because the gems were hidden in the bits of clay may we see the people in our world as god sees them in one thessalonian chapter 5 Verses 9 to 11 states this For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Therefore, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Church, encouraging your brothers and sisters about the word and the verses we have just read is uplifting, is supporting them, is cheering them on and reassuring them that God is still with us and will never forsake us. But even more important, it means giving them hope because the discouragement they feel robs them of hope. Discouragement and hopelessness go hand in hand. When trying to give discouraged brothers and sisters hope, remember that a real and lasting sense of hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. He is not just the source of our hope, but He is the source of our hope. This means the best way to encourage people who are struggling is to point them to Jesus Christ. Church building up each other and helping them to walk more closely with God in every situation is what the Lord wants us to do. This is why it is so important to consistently show the fruit of the Spirit in which you are always trying to build instead of tearing down. Let us build to reflect the image of Christ as we are all created in His image and likeness. We are all God's children, church, and in the body of Christ. With what we see in the world today, all of us, all of us need encouragement and build up one another in Christ. So let this today, the short sharing, be one of encouragement. 
we need to build and encourage each other up because the days are near. So God bless you. Thank you for hearing the message. Amen. <laughs>